I want you to know that your name is child of God. Your name is chosen. Your name is wanted. Your name is desired. No one can take your name, child of God. No one. The God we serve is able. The God we serve is able. The God we serve is able. I want that confidence. I want that God conviction. What happens to us is determined by what happens in us. You attract to yourselves because MIT did this research and they found out that negative things that happen to negative people is because they have negative aura about them. They call it aura. And positive things happen because to, positive, to people because they have this positive shield is a magnetic force. The Bible said whatsoever you, you, you think, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are just, whatsoever, he's giving us the mindset that we should have. Because you're attracting to yourselves. Every time you think, it's like a, a AM, FM radio. It travel, it creates a frequency. And it allows circumstances to travel back to you on that same frequency you are thinking. As a man thinketh, so is he. You attract who you are. Here's how the Bible says it. They said, faith is a substance in MIT. They said, we don't know what to call this stuff. So we're going to call it a substance. God already said faith is the substance. You've got to have faith in God. Faith in who God says you are. See, your circumstances don't define your destiny. You do. Just because you were born in a manger doesn't have to mean that you have to stay there. If you knew you were, if you knew who you were in God, you wouldn't even allow yourself to act like you act. Hanging around with people you hanging around with. But what are they doing for your life? Are they enabling dysfunctions in your life that God set you free from? Are they allowing you to stay stuck in a season? Like in permanent, permanent concrete when all you got to do is get up and walk out of it? When you have a promise of God on your life, you got to protect your anointing. You got to see and be very careful who you allow access to. And so the enemy is not after you. He's after the deliverer, that thing that's going to come out after the process. That thing that after you cross over, that thing that after you finally take a licking and keep on ticking and realize that I'm about to get better and not bitter. I'm about to become powerful and not pitiful. I'm about to begin to talk about where I'm headed instead of where I'm stuck at. I'm about to stop concentrating and I'm about to stop Facebook stalking people that walked out on me. The enemy uses haters to keep you so wound up tight you can't even concentrate on moving forward. He's not after who you are now, but he's after who you're going to be. Satan is trying to wear you out so you have no energy to take chase after God Why do you think whatever you're going through hell you can't even open your mouth? I, am I depending on myself or my own self-esteem or am I looking to Christ and saying God through you? I am confident through you. I am bold through you I walk by faith through you. I am beautifully and wonderfully made through you I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus through you. I'm the head and not the tail I'm above only and not and not beneath through you God. I can do all things and that's what we have to do We have to look at ourselves through the lens of Christ I dealt greatly with having low self-esteem for most of my life. It's until I had a relationship with Jesus Christ where I started to see myself through His eyes. And I started to see God that, that, that you know what, external things are temporary. It is, it is my relationship with you, God, is what is most important. So if you're feeling like, you know, if you're feeling like you're not enough, and you, I want you to know that your beauty does not define you. As a woman, we construct our realities in our mind. You see, you technically don't see with your eyes. You see with your mind. Your reality is only a representation of truth. It is not the truth. It is a representation. The Bible said Satan blinded the minds of the children of disobedience. Listen to me carefully. If God has said that you're powerful and beautiful, Satan literally has to blind your mind so that when you look at yourself, you are seeing from a blinded mind. You cannot, you cannot 
Allow the comments of the world to be your contentment because it will never sustain you. You will not find confidence in that. You will not find contentment in that. It will lead you to being crazy. Okay, my confidence and my contentment can only lie in knowing who I am and knowing the direction that God's taking me. So, number one, whose voice is loudest in my life? Is it the comments of the world? Is it the judge's comments? Is it, I don't know, my family, the world, the Twitter, the Instagram, the blah, 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 blah. What comments, whose voice is loudest in my life? It's so important that you find your victory in Jesus Christ because no matter what you're doing in life, you can find victories in every single season. You're gonna go through many seasons. You're gonna go through seasons where you feel like you're losing. You're gonna go through seasons where you feel like you just can't get it right. You're gonna go through seasons where you uh, feel like the bottom of the bottom. But truthfully, when you walk out of that season, you can, if you, if you walk it out with God, you can always look back and find a victory because you gain something. God takes you from glory to glory to glory. and He's not gonna leave you hanging. He's not gonna let you down. See, here's what you gotta understand. Satan cannot take the giftings that God has given to you. He cannot take the power God's given to you. And he cannot take the authority that God's given to you. The only thing he can do is try to discredit your identity. Because if he can discredit your identity, you'll still do awesome things, but for all the wrong reasons. When I know who I am, I will not be performance driven. When I know who I am, I will not be performance driven. I don't have to prove anything to you because my dad already told me I'm his son. See, when you know that, you can rest. When you don't know that, you'll be running around trying to do things to prove to people that you are loved instead of resting in the fact that you are loved. My God shall supply all of my needs according to His riches in glory. I'm His son, I'm His daughter, and because I'm affirmed, everything I need is coming to me. I don't have to try to trick it into being something it's not. And I believe that the enemy can only have an advantage over you when you don't know who you are. You see, family, who God is calling you to be, the only way the enemy can attack that plan and that word that God will release in your life is to build strongholds from the moment, even before you were born, there was an agenda about the things that would become, you see, strongholds for me, I look at strongholds as opinions that have been established. When you experience the same thing over and over again, that is, it's not just that you think that am I just being rejected, but then you feel like there's something about you that keeps, you, you almost identify yourself to rejection when it's a cycle. Because a stronghold is, a, is like a fortress. It's something that has been built. It's something that has been established. And so the places in your life where you feel like I keep going through the same cycle, could it be that that is actually the enemy's agenda to build a stronghold against you? That you would identify yourself as something you are not. I want you to know that your name is child of God. Your name is chosen. Your name is wanted. Your name is desired. God had to heal me of my thinking, of the stuff that was in my soul that had been deposited, of paradigms. Your paradigm creates cycles. How do you break the paradigm? You have to have a paradigm shift. So you have to know how a paradigm is created. How are paradigms created? Relational constellations. You resemble those who you assemble. If you want to change your life, you gotta change your relationships. Now the only way that you can have a belief and a pride in yourself is if you first know who you are in Jesus Christ. You have to know who you are in Him. That's, that's the basis of this whole thing. If you know who you are in Christ and you are content in that, you know that He redeemed you, that He bought you back, that He came down to the earth, died for your sins, tore the veil, so now you're connected with God, and now you have this beautiful relationship with Him, and you know that He has made you beautifully and wonderfully made because He's the one who made you. You've got to know who you are in Christ. That's where your confidence comes from. That's where you know, and that's the only way. And that's the thing about self-esteem. It's your own esteem. It's yourself. And if it's dangerous because outside of Christ, you might go and do all these measures, plastic surgery and all these things to get yourself to look a certain type of way. But on the inside, your spirit is just dying away because you have no relationship with Christ.
No one can take your name, child of God. No one. The God we serve is able. The God we serve is able. The God we serve is able. 